Hi, this is Josh with Retro TV One Tech, and today I have something really special for you. This is something that I've wanted for a very long time. As you can see from the box here, it's an original Commodore 64 uh, in the original box and uh, really in great shape. And actually, when I talked to the person on eBay that I bought it from, he thinks it may be unused. So we're going to get into this, take a look at it, see if, it, if we really do think it's unused. Obviously, there's no way to know for sure, but we'll see what clues we can find and what evidence we can see if it has been used or if it's just really in good shape. Either way, obviously, the box is in really good shape and uh, super excited to dive into this and check this out. Uh, before we get too far, please be sure to subscribe to Retro TV One Tech for more great tech videos just like this one. Hit the like button, leave a comment, all those things. Uh, but also, definitely wanted to talk a little bit more about why I've wanted a C64 for so long. This was, of course, one of the first computers I ever used in elementary school. They had them all over the place, and uh, I just never bought one because we got an IBM PC, and you've seen my Tandy uh, 1000 TL2 that I have uh, that was our first computer that we owned as a family. But I never got one of these, and of course we felt like you know we didn't need one because we had the Tandy, and back then we didn't realize all the cool things the Commodores could do, you know, the PCs even couldn't do back in those times. So... Uh, super excited to have one of these. Of course, you can kind of see behind me, I have a DC-64, the Maxi, the, the remake of um, the C-64, and I'll actually be doing a separate video about that another time. But I do have, you know, this re remake, but it's, of course, an emulator inside and all that, and it's su still super cool, but um, nothing like this original that I've got here, and I wanted to really have both uh, to be able to enjoy them. So let's get into the box and see what we've got. All right, so here we go. So again, looking at the box... You can actually see the serial number here. Uh, it's, I don't know if you can see it on the video or not, but it is P0182-1706. And so, uh, you know, it's a fairly early serial number. It's still in the millions. It's 1.8 million. Uh, but we'll see exactly what year it was made. I also see a couple other things here before I open uh, the box. I see a Kmart sticker here. Uh, that shows the price of uh, two ninety nine, but then it's crossed out, and then there's another sticker right here. Let me see if I can get a little closer here for you. That shows one ninety nine, so it definitely was marked down at some point. So I'm not sure how long it sat on the shelf, or anything like that, or when it's manufactured. But you can see upside down, crossed out two ninety nine, and you can see one ninety nine up here. So we'll see if the serial number matches. On the case of the c64 just one more real quick look at the box here you can see the advertisement there advanced color graphics professional sound and music uh, the cpm option which i don't think was super popular i think a lot of people use this for games and home use and not the cpm more of the business side of things and on the other side you can see it says an expandable computer system there's a little better view of the side panel and you can see it shows some of the ports there, power switch, and then the, the whole back with the cartridge slot, um, as well as the RF modulator, um, audio video, serial, all those kind of things, the user port. And um, so yeah, it kind of shows all the different ports it has on it, which is nice. Then on the back side, it shows business first, which is interesting, on the left there. Then communication, um, you got comparative phone shopping i'm not sure what that is electronic encyclopedia education of course and it was used a lot in education uh, at least in the schools around where i went to school in indiana and then plus entertainment and that's kind of a last thing which is interesting because i think these again were used more uh, for entertainment but i think what they were trying to do is appeal more to you know somebody that would be buying it uh, like a parent that would be buying it maybe and think oh i can use this for work too you can see there there's a guy typing and what looks like a productivity software. It's got the printer and the whole setup there with the disk drive and all that. So interesting uh, the way it was marketed. Last thing before we open it up, it has the uh, technical specifications here. There's a little bit of wear on the on the uh, box here, but you can see all those different uh, categories. It even goes over the sound, the interfaces, the display, 40 column by 25 lines, 16 colors, uh, 320 by 200 pixel, high resolution, of course, that was high resolution at the time. Um, and uh, they've got the ROM listed even as um, 20 kilobytes. And then, the, uh, of course, the very famous 64K of RAM. All right, now let's open it. Super excited to see what kind of shape this is in and uh, how much validity to the claim of unused there is here. 
There we go. There's that famous sign there. Welcome to the world of friendly computing. It's pretty cool. I, I really wanted one of these in original box. I'm super excited I got the box. You can see it's a little warm, but you know, for a 30-some-year-old box, it's in pretty good shape. I think this might be just packing materials that the seller put in there, uh, but you can see it does have the original uh, styrofoam, so that's good. And uh, it looks pretty good. It looks a little bit brown at first glance, but uh, yeah, so let's see before we get into the system, let's see what's in the front pouch here. All right, so it looks like we've got, um, this is the RF cable, I believe. So that is um, what you'd hook up from the back of the system um, to the RF switch and then into the TV. Um, and then let's see, I think this is the, uh, the power supply, the giant heavy brick here. So that's awesome Commodore logo there. And uh, definitely looks a little dusty, so I'm not sure about the unused part of that there, but um, anyway, still in pretty good shape. You can see the plug there, and just uh, just four pins used in that plug, and we're going to need to test this because these power supplies are prone to failure for sure, so we're going to need to test this out and see how it is. It may have just gotten dusty inside the box too, uh, you never know, so looking at the plug there, you can kind of see little bit of dust and wear on there but it looks like it would be easy to clean up the the brick itself looks pretty good looks to be in good shape all the text and everything easy to see on the back so let me put that down for just a minute let's see what else is in this front box here and this actually is interesting because it's still in the original wrapping here this is the of course the RF switch computer to TV that's pretty cool Again, that has some wear on the side of it, too, so it looks like it probably was used, but I don't think it was used very much, and it certainly is in, is in really, really good shape, so let's put this aside for now, and there's nothing else in that part of the box. Now, leave me a comment. I don't know. Uh, there's no audio-visual uh, cable for composite. Uh, there's just the RF, so let me know in the comments if there's supposed to be uh, the um, audio-visual cable that hooks into the... the uh, output port there in the back because all I have is RF on this one right now of course I can easily buy one but I'm just curious if that's supposed to come with it or not okay so we're gonna gently lift this out of here all right there it is looks amazing let me take these styrofoam inserts off of here and what just fell out underneath of there it looks like um, looks like a bill of some kind I wonder if it's a repair or a bill of sale but first let's look at the system itself it's like a little bit of styrofoam on there left from the uh, styrofoam pieces there but that is in really really good shape it's definitely a little bit more brown than i think it should be but one thing that i noticed right away is the mustard style function keys and that actually um, wasn't super common all of the c64s i saw have the brown function keys like my reproduction c64 up there uh, on the shelf behind me here so it's interesting it's got the mustard style keys but it does have the rainbow color badge um, if you follow C64 history, you know that the silver badge is actually um, featured on the earlier production runs of this computer, and the rainbow badge was added later. I'm not sure exactly what year. Uh, but the reason for the mustard keys, this is actually the VIC-20 style function keys here, and the reason for these is because a lot of times they just use whatever parts they have when they were assembling these, because the keyboards between the VIC-20, which came before this, and the Commodore 64, this computer here, they're interchangeable. Even though the cases are slightly different dimensions, I think I've seen uh, somewhere that the VIC-20 is slightly taller um, from the side than what the VIC-20 is. But what's interesting is that the keyboards were completely 100% interchangeable. And so if they had extra VIC-20 keyboards laying around, uh, all they would do is just use that in a C64 that they needed to produce. But the cool thing I see here, and I don't know how well this comes across on camera, the keyboard is really clean, so that leads me to believe that it wasn't used much or was somehow restored. I'm not really sure, but that keyboard does not look used at all. I mean, again, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but I mean, there's like not a speck of dust on it. And you know when you use a keyboard for a while, even if I walked over to my PC keyboard on my main computer, it's pretty dirty from all the dust and things and, you know, fingerprints and uh, all the different... Uh, you know, dead skin and stuff that gets on keyboards, and this just doesn't have any of that on it at all. Uh, and the case looks really, really clean. I don't see any scuff marks or scratches on the case at all. Let's take 
I'm gonna take this. I already looked at the side. Let's look at the back here and see what it looks like. So all the ports look good. It does look like there's a slight color variation between the top and bottom case, and that wasn't uncommon. These do tend to brown over the years as the plastic ages, and I do think it can age inside a box if it wasn't being used. I've seen that for sure. Like my Super Nintendo is brown on the top, um, and it's been, you know, um, very safely in a cabinet and not in the sun. So anyway, you can see the on-off switch. Of course, it does have the, the it's kind of hard to see there, but it does have the newer style rounded power connector. The very first uh, C64s that were made had a um, rectangular style power plug. So that was a little bit of a difference. And it looks like, yeah, the video port, it looks like it is the 8-pin uh, video port. So it does have the chroma and luma. And of course, you've got the RF port right there. So overall, let me look at the uh, bottom of it and let's see if the serial numbers match. And yes, I actually took a picture earlier. So I was doing a little research on this. So I remember the serial numbers. So yeah, the serial numbers do match. You can go back earlier in the video if you want to verify. But P0182-1706. So they do match. That's pretty cool. And you can see a little bit inside of it. But yeah, this case is really, really clean. It does look very much like... There's a little wear around the badge here, but... It does look very much like if it was used, it wasn't used much. So it's really, really cool. So I put that down for just a second, and then we're going to uh, look at, first of all, I want to look at the, the bill that fell down in here and see what that was a bill of sale or a bill for repair. So let's check that out. So I'll go ahead and show you the serial number again, and you can see that they do match, which is really, really cool. Uh, that they are verified and matching and I did look up on the serial number registry for C64s that the P stands for the Westchester assembly plant which was the main office and assembly plant I believe uh, in the United States. All right, we're going to take a look at this here and see Kmart sales check major appliance department so that matches with the uh, price tags on the front um, and this hopefully gives us a date on it it tells, tells us the person's name and address I wouldn't think that that probably is still valid anymore um, but let's see here okay so here you go so this was sold 920 of 84 uh, sold by sales associate number 38 and it has the amount of 199 because of course that was the um, that was the price tag that was marked down there so I'm wondering if this was an early manufacturer computer that just set uh, for a long time and uh, you can see the tax and all that stuff down there and some, for some reason, this part might be a proof of purchase was actually cut out, it looks like. And then this part got uh, got ripped off maybe by the way it was sitting in the case. But it is still cool that it's got the original uh, sales check or bill of sale or whatever you want to say there um, on that. So, and again, who knows the manufacturer? I would assume it was manufactured in 82 or 83 just because it does have the mustard style keys and the serial number is, you know, um, below 2 million. So but anyway, pretty interesting. All right, what else is in the box? First of all, we have this neat little brochure that says, get more out of your Commodore computer. Looks like he's doing the uh, Jedi Force lightning there with his fingers to the Commodore. So, I don't know, probably voids your warranty if you do that. <laughs> with Commodore user support publications. Oh, so there you go. So you can get the uh, Home Computer Magazine Power Play. It's pretty cool. The Micro Computer Magazine. Um, published six times a year or four times a year, depending on which one, and you can subscribe now. It's one of these things like, you know, of course, if you mailed it in, it'd be returned because uh, Commodore and sadly doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but there you go. That's pretty cool that that's here. And again, this, this um, I don't know if you can see on the video, this is crisp and definitely looks like it hasn't been touched or messed with much. Let's see. Commodore Business Machines Magazine subscription, Holmes, Pennsylvania. So, and, uh, it's got a first class permit number and all that fun stuff. So that is pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Even more information. Um, dial up for our paperless user magazine. That's cool. Hmm. Our paperless magazine is available now over the telephone using your Commodore computer and modem. That's cool. Talks about a modem. Join our computer club. Get used with the get help with the products, uh, computing problems, talk, <laughs> quotes to other Commodore friends or get up to the minute information on new products, software, and educational resources. That's pretty cool. Wow. And of course, I'm sure none of those, um, I'm sure none of those uh, phone numbers work anymore. 
It includes a free subscription to CompuServe. That's pretty cool. And each VIC modem package. So they're still talking about the VIC modem uh, because, you know, the VIC-20 had a modem as well. So that's pretty cool, even though this is in a C64. So we'll put that down and see what the next publication is. Super Software. So it's like a little software guide here. More than 70 Commodore software programs. Love the old fonts on these things. So again, here you can send a computer club, and that's in Westchester. So don't forget your club membership fee. <laughs> That's cool. You know, Nintendo was doing that too. They had Nintendo Power and all the clubs and things like that. So there you can see some finance software. That's the first thing that's super exciting. I'm sure that's what everybody was excited about. Magic Desk, I think I've heard about that. It's a type file and it was kind of maybe um, some kind of a an attempt at a GUI, but very, very early attempt. Ooh, the Magic Desk typewriter works just like an electric typewriter. Okay. Let's see what's inside of it. Are there any games in here? Ah, here we go. All right, so what do we have here? We have Easy Script, Easy Spell, Easy Calc. Okay, Teach Yourself How to Program. That's cool. Introduction to Basic. All right, and there's some box art and things like that. And then you've actually got some games over here. And I wonder if these are cartridge-based or if they are disc-based. Omega Race, Sea Wolf. Now, of course, Omega Race was on the uh, VIC-20. As well almost like asteroids I guess from the Atari yeah so it says cartridge see after that so these are all cartridges probably makes it easier because not everybody had a disk drive to start out with and those you know were an additional expense if you were trying to save money here we've got sorry I'm trying not to bounce it too much Avenger Frogmaster yep these are all cartridges reasonably priced though all under 20 bucks so so you can, you can go ahead and uh, order these through this catalog, through the computer club. Here's your credit card. Methods of payment. It's pretty cool. All right, the next document in the box looks like a warranty and registration card. All right, that's cool. Wow. Definitely not sent in again to Westchester. It tells all the warranty information. I'm not going to bore you with all that, but you can see the warranty registration card there. Anybody's interested in that. And then you can see the, the warranty. It's like 90-day warranty on this one. I think the warranty's probably passed. Okay. A lot of people wouldn't care too much about all these old documents, but to me it's cool because it's almost like, you know, going back in time and getting a brand new computer. And then here's the user's manual. And again, looks brand new. I think a lot. I wonder if this really was used that much at all. Because uh, I would think that people would use the, the user's manual if they were going to use the computer. And... Um, you know, again, with the keyboard not having hardly any dust or any kind of uh, signs of use, all the little particles that get on keyboards from people's fingers, I just wonder if this was just, you know, in the case and maybe it was open at some point and it gathered dust and maybe some wear and tear just by sitting for so long. But this manual, I mean, it looks brand new. Either that or somebody was very, very, very gentle with it. Again, I have no way to prove one way or the other, how much this was or wasn't used. But according to the seller, it was just sitting around um, in storage and that they had never seen it used. So it's cool. Congratulations on your purchase of one of the best computers in the world. Wow. I'm now the proud owner of Commodore 64. It's pretty cool. So of course, these are really, really good. Um, oh, wow, you can connect it to an audio system. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. So it says, since the Commodore 64 furnishes a channel of high fidelity sound, you may wish to play it through a quality amplifier. And so it talks about um, you can you can actually buy the extra cord to connect it to your TV monitor, everything else. But I guess that the RF cable was all that was included, and probably because most people would be hooking it to a TV. That's, of course, the easiest way um, to make that happen. So anyway, you can see some of the peripherals a completed system might look like this get your 1541 disk drive and your joystick and go from there i wonder i've seen other versions of this manual i just wonder if this was the if this is the original revision of the manual it said copyright 1982 it even talks about how to uh create pictures i guess or sprites i'm not really sure what all that is it's pretty neat Talks about attacking decay settings for sound, software, and accessories. So it's a pretty good manual. It's nice that it's spiral bound because it's easy to just leave open um, as you're using it. So yeah. So anyway, 
pretty cool manual. And I was worried I wouldn't be able to try this until I got a proper uh, composite audio cable because obviously I don't have a 300 ohm to 75 ohm adapter. If you remember on older TVs, they had just these uh, 300 ohm and you'd screw these onto the back of the TV. But um, if you had just the uh, coax cable, which is 75 ohm, you would put that, you know, you'd uh, connect that to the TV um, and there would be a little converter. So anyway, or some of these would just have the coax and there was a converter off of that. But either way, this is definitely um, a little bit of an older um, version of this. And you can see this says connect to antenna. So you could put your antenna here. They didn't even talk about cable at that point, but you could connect your antenna here and then switch back and forth between the computer and the TV. But luckily I have an Atari hooked up to my uh, CRT TV over here. So I think I can use the same um, switch that the Atari uses because it's just the same RF input uh, to test the computer out. But before I do, I need to test the power supply uh, because like I said before, these power supplies are known to fail. And when they fail, they put out way too much power. I'm eventually going to get a protection circuit for this or a new, they actually make new power supplies with better components that don't fail. But I, I am told that this system should be working, um, that the, um, the person who sold it to me did at least test it and that it was working, but I want to make sure that this thing's not putting out too much voltage. It should be putting out about five volts um, DC on one of the pins, and I want to make sure it doesn't go over that. I guess if it gets close to like five and a half or six volts, it can fry a lot of the chips. Uh, so I'm not going to plug it in very long, but I just want to plug it in long enough to see if it works, and uh, then I'll get the uh, power supply protection for it. But before I do that, I want to plug it in and test it with the multimeter and see what kind of voltages it's putting out. So I cleared some stuff off the table here, and as I'm getting this ready to test, I'm noticing that the rubber band that was originally connected and are probably around the power supply here is actually um, stuck or has kind of melted to the cord itself, which does indicate to me that this wasn't used, because if it was used, it would have been unrolled and untaped. I think this box was just left open. Um, because I don't know how you would you wouldn't you know you wouldn't leave this all stuck on here if you were going to use it so and that and indicates that it sat in the box for a long time because they if they had just gotten the computer opened it up and turned it on you, you would have taken the rubber band off you would have had to have taken it off in order to um, you know in order to access the cord and you know unfurl it and plug it into the wall so what's interesting is um, that it is stuck here like this and uh, I'm gonna deal with that later but I just thought that was interesting to point out all right so I got it unwrapped and actually plugged it in and everything seems to be okay right now um, I don't hear or smell anything so that's good it's past the smoke test so far on this power supply so I can get my multimeter and check the voltages here right, just to make sure I'm doing this right I got a power supply pinout diagram here I found through the magic of Google of course and so actually I'm concerned about the back side and so the ground wire is the one that's straight down from the notch on the top and the 5 volt the one we're really concerned about is pin 5 uh, which is the one that we're going to test with the red uh, on the multimeter over here so that'll be um, the where the uh, black and red leads go I'm not super super expert and using a multimeter, but I do have a cheaper one that I've, I've used before, and I think it should suffice for this to check out this voltage. So here we go. And just to show you again, I'm looking at the ground being the bottom pin right here, and the five volt DC being this. These are AC pins on top, I guess, nine volt AC from what I saw on the diagram. All right, I had to get some a new battery for my multimeter. Apparently it's been a while since I've used it, but now, we should be ready to do this. So I'm going to check, check the voltage on this and uh, see if I can see where we're at here. They're really close together, so i got to be very careful. All right, so I'm getting a reading of 5.14. So that's actually pretty good. It's a really stable reading. 5.14. So there you go. All right, so this is pretty safe. So it's a little bit over five, but it's not bad. I'm gonna check website just to make sure, but that's a pretty solid voltage on that, so that's good.
All right, so I did a little more research and, and found out that actually 5.1 volts is really good, that it should fluctuate between like 4.95 and 5.1. I wanted to test the voltage one more time on the DC side, and it's showing 5.13. So that's really, really good. Very consistent voltage on that. Great. Well, I feel good about plugging it in now. So I will get the protection circuit, but at least... I don't have to worry about that it's going to fry it today. So let's plug this thing in and let's fire it up and turn it on and all the things. Let's try it. I can't wait. Oh my goodness. I'm getting this thing set up to be used on a TV much, much newer than it is. This is a Panasonic a True Flat TV that I use for all my retro systems. But what I noticed as I was getting it ready is this cord. I don't know how well you can see it, but this cord has still, this RF cord still has the original um, the original little uh, twisty tie on it, which is crazy. And again, it does not look like it's ever been used. It's just insane to me. I mean, I guess it could have been retied, but wow. So I'm going to get this plugged in. Luckily, I have an Atari up here that already has the game switch plugged into it. So I just need to unplug the Atari's RF output and plug in the Commodore's and we'll get it fired up. All right, I got it all hooked up at least to the RF. And I wanted to show this, by the way, I got this at Radio Shack. I did a video a um, month or so ago on the last Radio Shack here in Orlando and I got this brand new inbox TV game switch and I almost had to use it because I couldn't quite figure out how to get the RF cord hooked into the one that came with the Atari. And I just realized that the cord was just that tight because again I just don't think it's been used so uh, that was kind of funny but I've got it all at least hooked up there and I'm going to plug in the power. I didn't want to have that plugged in any longer than necessary and so uh, then we'll get it started. All right, everything is plugged in. The moment of truth. I got to get the TV on first. I'm super excited because this is the first time that I've actually used a um, real Commodore 64 since I was in um, elementary school. So that's pretty incredible. Let's see what channel we're on here. I believe it should be on channel three. We'll see. I'll switch it if I need to, but I'm super excited to try this thing out. All the voltages are good. Everything should be set. Got everything plugged in. All right, here we go. Aha! All right, good. Now, I think I'm on the wrong channel. Hold on just a second. Yeah. Okay, so it's on. I think it's just not giving a good, a good signal. So I need to figure that out. I think the cord is loose. Hold on just a second. Okay, so the good news is the power is on. You can see the power LED there. Bad news is I can't get a picture, at least not from the RF. So I don't know. I wonder if the other, if I switch channels, that happens. So it looks like it's black screen. So I don't know what that means. Um, not really sure, but the good news is we can... We can definitely work on it and see what's going on with it. I'm just wondering if there's something else wrong with the video. So I may try another RF modulator and see, or RF game switch, this uh, Radio Shack one down here, and see if it's any different. But let's try something else. But at least the power's on. We just need to figure out what's going on with it. So, All right, so I guess this video is also going to turn into an unboxing of this game switch here because I want to see if it works with the system. The eBay seller said that it worked. Uh, when I got it. So uh, anyway, this is kind of cool. This has never been opened before. This is an original Radio Shack um, game switch, which is really cool. So there it is, out of the box for the very first time in, in uh, however many years. I don't know when this was manufactured. It says for Nintendo and Sega. Interesting, because they didn't um, do quite the same type of RF. I guess they did. I guess Nintendo and Sega did do that. Yeah, because you could plug this into the back of your Nintendo there. So I can plug this into the back of the Commodore and I should be able to try it and see if this works better. So either way, it's definitely coming on. I just It's just not getting a picture yet. So we'll try it again. By the way, this is pretty cool actually too, because I don't know if you can see this or not. It's focused, but this is an automatic TV game switch. So there's no actual uh, physical switch on it, it switches by itself, so that's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd ever seen one of those before. 
All right, here we go. Let's see if this has any different results. Okay, it looks like about the same issue here. Let me switch channels on it just to make sure. Yep. All right. So definitely something wrong with the system now, unfortunately. Luckily, I have uh, some people willing to look at it. And I'm also going to order a regular audiovisual uh, composite cable and see if we can get it going that way. It may just be the RF that's not working, which is fine. I probably want to use it on composite anyway because it's a lot better picture. Um, so and I don't have a game cartridge or anything to test and see if there's any sound coming out and if it's just the video. So I'm not really sure. But either way, uh, at least we got to try it. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, looking at this amazing system, obviously, you know, we're not going to give up on it here. We're going to keep working on it and get it get it working properly. Uh, but at least the power light's on so we know that the power... It's getting power and it's uh, trying to boot and uh, there's just no picture right now. So we'll get it working and we'll see what happens. All right, so before I put this away for now, I thought I would go ahead and open it up and see how it looks inside. See uh, if I can see anything else about the inside of the system that might be might give me a, a clue to what's going on with it. So you can see the RF shield here. So I'm looking, there's this shield here and then there's tape on it. And it looks like it looks like there's a um, looks like the tape is one of those kind of things that's like warranty protection or something. So that's kind of interesting for sure. All right. Well, I don't think I want to take that shield off right now. Obviously, if I have to work on it, I will eventually have to take it off. But that is uh, really cool and shows that definitely it's never been at least worked on before because this tape appears to be original. So anyway, if you know more about that than I do, leave a comment. I'm just not ready to take the tape off of it yet. Um, I was, I didn't know that that would be there. I thought the RF shield kind of just lifted off. So that's pretty interesting. It's almost like a, like a void your warranty kind of a thing. So obviously our warranty is already void, but that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, and wrap this up. I just wanted to see what it looked like inside. So that's pretty cool. Well, all right, everybody, that's all for now for this unboxing and testing video of this Commodore 64. Is it used? Is it unused? We don't know. Is it new? So definitely let me know what you think uh, from all the evidence that was presented. Of course, there's no way to know for sure, uh, but definitely let me know in the comments down below if you think it was unused or if you think it has been used somehow. Uh, some of the wrappings on the cords lead me to believe that it was unused or at least very lightly used, and the fact that how clean the keyboard and case of the computer are leads me to believe that it's unused, but leave me a comment. What's your opinion, or do you have any other things that I didn't cover, didn't talk about in the video that you think uh, we should consider when talking about whether this is used, unused, new, etc., all those things. But also, of course, we're going to work really hard to get it working um, because, you know, it's just too beautiful to leave not working in the box like this, so we're going to keep it protected for now. Uh, but I ordered a few things to check and see if uh, that might be the problem. The first thing I'm going to check is the video cable. So I got a regular video cable that'll do composite video and audio so that I can make sure and check that and see if maybe it was just the RF modulator not working in the system for some reason. Um, also, if that's not the case, I also ordered a new power supply, which if nothing else, at least it'll keep the system more protected because uh, I was getting some weird voltages from the AC side of the power supply off the video and I wanted to check and make sure that was right, but I wasn't sure my multimeter was quite set up to do that. So a lot of things to check and see if we can get it working, but we are gonna keep working on it. So there'll be future videos on this on this channel so definitely watch out for those and also thank you so much for supporting retro tv one tech this year is our first year for doing this and super excited to be able to offer this to you of course i haven't been able to post as many videos as i wanted to because i've been working a lot on our main channel resort tv one which covers disney so definitely uh, subscribe over to that channel if you haven't already done so we cover disney parks news all kinds of different things on resort tv one so go check that out and uh, subscribe over there and also be subscribed here and make sure you're ready to go for all kinds of new videos 
that we'll have in the future. All right, everybody. So for now, enjoy that tech and keep it retro.